top seed of Gonzaga's mm -hmm. out. Lost to Arkansas earlier tonight. Baylor, the defending champ and a top seed. They lost out in the round of 32. And Arizona, one of two left. Electric crowd here at AT&T Center, a sea of red. Our three officials, Terry Oglesby. He's got six Sweet 16s and two Final Fours. Paul Sells and Marcus Pettigrew. And Terry Oglesby will put it in the air. And it's going to be touched by Houston. That'll be Arizona basketball to get us started. Uh, the pressure by Houston is going to be countered by the movement into ball streams, side to side opportunities for Arizona to try to confuse the back line defense of the Cougars. Allie LaForce will give you a more detailed report on Creasa, but he is back, and that is a significant storyline for the Arizona Wildcats. First time he's been in the starting lineup since the quarterfinals of the Pac-12 tournament. Tubelis gets up the first one, can't hit it. And now the Houston Cougars. And you know they travel well, just about a three-hour drive from Houston here to San Antonio. And Fabian White opens up the scoring for the Cougs. He's the centerpiece for this Cougar team. The savvy veteran does a little bit of everything. The leader on and off the court. Indicative that he gets the first bucket. Arizona 33 and 3. They've won eight straight. All three of their losses this year came on the road. As the Loco misses his first try, the seven footer. High octane offense, very talented defensive group in the Houston Cougars. Matter of fact, rated the third best defense in the country, a defensive rating of 89.4. They're a top 10 offensive team. You got a steal. Tubalas just lost the handle. He had a breakaway, he took a peek. Yep. Fabian White was closing, <laughs> and Tubelis fumbles it out of bounds at an Arizona turnover. And these are the opportunities for Arizona that you got to take advantage of. And he looked right in his rearview mirror at Fabian White. Those opportunities don't come too often. You got to make sure you capitalize off of them. Marvel at what Kelvin Sampson and the Cougars have been able to do. A Final Four team a year ago, but they lost four starters. And then they lost two starters this year as Tajay Moore delivers the three ball for Houston. The kind of start you want. You know why if you're Houston, not that you're just making baskets, but guess what? The crowd is now energized even more and into the game early. Here's Matherin. Kerr on the offensive rebound. And finally put back it in. Dale and Terry, so you got a couple of extra looks at it. Kirk yeah. Kreisa, a terrific three-point shooter along with Matherin in that backcourt. They've missed his, his scoring, his shooting, and dealing with a bad right ankle, Kirk Kreisa. Houston losing a couple of their signature offensive players in Tremont Mark and Marcus Sasser this year, and yet they just continued to win. Regular season and tournament champs in the American Athletic. And that's what size right there. Coloco see the pull up in the transition. Coloco may not have gotten the block shot, but Carlton felt his presence, not able to finish on the opposite side. And here's Edwards. Part of that Final Four team with Texas Tech. Houston does have experience yep. in the NCAA tournament, and while Arizona has great talent and great size, they have a lot of guys that are playing in their first ever NCAA tournament. As Terry is fouled, and he's got free throws coming. Gives us a chance to remind you that Coca-Cola Zero Sugar, is it the best Coke ever? That's the question. You should try it first. Dalen Terry knocks down the first. Those two key losses, Jimmy Tremontmark, Marcus Sasser, and they had to change what they do a little bit. I mean, they, they've added some defense, but they lost two major scoring threats. But the positive that came out of it was the fact that when the injuries occurred, you see the ball batted around it's this right here. It happened in December, which gave enough time for Houston to recalibrate with their lineup, different players in different positions and different roles. And hence, we're in a Sweet 16 right now talking about the Cougars. White gets stuck. Double team comes. They get the strip. Creesa. 
Coloco standing at over seven feet tall and a 7-5 wingspan. And yet Houston is known for their rebounding prowess, especially on the offensive glass. And that'll be tested here tonight. To Bellis, he is fouled. No basket. Part of the emphasis on the freedom of movement. Easy call for Terry Oglesby, and it'll be baseline out of bounds for Arizona. Defensively, Houston leading the NCAA in opponent field goal percentage, just 37.5%, and the high-powered Arizona offense, one of the best shooting teams in college basketball, third best. But this is where you can take advantage of how aggressive the, the Cougars are on defense. Listen, they commit over 17 fouls a game because they're so aggressive. So if you're Arizona, stay true to who you are, use the aggression against Houston, get them in the penalty early, foul trouble, and now the advantages to you to get to the free throw line where you're shooting 74%. Three early fouls here for the Cougars. Shed just picked up his first. Now Benedict Matherin goes, and the floater, no. Off to a shaky start is Matherin, who just went off against TCU, had a season high 30 points in that game. He's 0 for 3. Here is White in and out. Carlton, uh, offensive uh, rebound, and that is what Houston does. That's just grown man strength right there. He was able to hold a taller Coloco off with one arm, gather it with his left, and then finish. Turn it over. A little erratic. And everybody's marking a man for the Cougars as we get to our first timeout. Strong man. Grown man game inside Carlton with experience inside able to finish Houston up four early. To go to the Elite Eight. Time now to check in with the third member of our team, Ali LaForce. Hello, Ali. Hey, Brian. Well, as you know, the resurgence of Houston basketball under Kelvin Sampson has been impressive. They are the second winningest program in the nation since 2017 2018 one of two teams in the country ranking in the top 10 on both sides of the ball but defense has been the calling card it starts with conditioning too I'll tell you they are one of the only schools I have ever seen running sprints and gassers in practice the day before the sweet 16 that's what we saw yesterday the conditioning starts in the summer and it never stops the seniors the grad students they'll tell you they are not going to miss that but Fabian White said it set the standard for mental toughness to be great. Look at them run now. They do get out and run. They are in an excellent condition. Matherin on the breakaway is fouled on his way in. No easy baskets. And Kelvin Sampson has hung his hat on defense. And they have become a powerhouse in the AAC. And let's take it a step further. And that's a great reporting by Allie. Listen, to get to this level, you have to be able to have the facilities the backbone and that's what Calvin Sampson came in and immediately done high fine center 25 million practice facility the for I mean for Tita a renovation there at the arena so now you're competing with the big boys in facilities now you're able to go out and get the kind of young men you want to compete at a high level but it started from having pride in the all-around program not just kind of bringing the winning portion to it and while Calvin Sampson will give you the the coach speak that they're not a great shooting team oh, oh yeah mm -hmm. they actually shoot it okay and good enough and when you can buy all the offensive rebounds they certainly make it work well they're in the top 10 of offensive efficiency along with defensive efficiency in the country substitutions here for Arizona Umar Balo on the floor another seven footer that they boast and can bring in and that's going to be a whistle going in Fabian White. And one for Fabian White, the grad senior. First team all AAC. Of all the great players you think about that have, that have graced the Houston uniform over the years. 120 career wins, but also program leader in games played, 147, and hopefully counting for him that he wants. White hit a huge three against Illinois in their round two victory. He is their leader, their energy bringer inside. Double team comes. Tubelas kicks it out. Ball movement's good. Kyer just into the game. Cannot hit. Out of the pack comes Shed. He wants to push. 
the shed. Little hesitation in the corner. That's Walker Jr. Freshman showing no fear. And lighting it up from three-point range as Ramon Walker Jr. And now Houston has Arizona flustered. Well, the tip drill, outlet, shed. All you do is make a decision. Corner, three ball. If you're free as for me, give me all three of those. Most of his shots come from beyond the arc. I see why. <laughs> Three quarters of his shots, and he's camping in the corner. That's right. Meanwhile, Houston's defense has Arizona just one for eight with three turnovers. Here goes Edwards, and he'll score a quick release in front of the seven footer coming to close in Balo. 7 0 Cougar run. Furious pace here. Now there it kicks it. Terry, three pointer. He's got a good looking stroke. And he knocks it down. What you see right there, Arizona settled in. They took their time. And then when they needed to attack the pressure, Matherin was able to get by his defender, then make the right play over to Terry for that open three. Terry's got all six or the two field goals made, six of the seven. And Bala with a steal. Turnover Houston up ahead. Matherin, he's running. Matherin, a little sidestep. Hangs, can't finish. <laughs> Tubelis is there and a foul on the floor. Cougars will be hit with a foul, the loose ball foul. Arizona will retain possession. You can watch live men's games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with NCAA March Madness Live. Scan the QR code right now to download. Brian, it may be something little here, but decision making in, in open court. Mather in that time took the ball back into traffic where people were coming. He either utilized the right hand side of the rim and lane. He may have either gotten the foul or gotten the basket or both. Tubelis lost the handle. And again, Arizona basketball. So Tajay Moore with a couple of fouls. Early foul trouble for him. Houston off to a fast start defensively. Tubelis trying to get to that left hand. Missed it. Walker the rebound. Dreadful shooting start for the Wildcats. Just two for 11. They've missed nine already. Cougars have had two threes. Walker and Moore. Edwards, their leader in the backcourt. Shed gives Beautiful. it up. Cheney. And a foul. Cheney. Go strong, excellent ball movement there by the Cougars. And Reggie Cheney, his first minutes on the floor. Well, it was Edwards who drug out the pick and roll that got it back to Shad. Matherin with the long closeout. Shad able to get by, and then once you attract the defender, you just got to put the ball on point and on target inside. Reggie Cheney scored one point against Illinois last Sunday, did have six rebounds. Three offensive rebounds. <laughs> Misses that one badly. Hey, show your love for your favorite NCAA team with officially licensed fan gear. For the best selection of team apparel and accessories, head to NCAA.com slash shop. <laughs> Missed them both. Coloco back on the floor. Secures the rebound. Kyer running the port. For Kresa, good early minutes. We'll see how the the allotment of time and the rotation minutes work for Kirk Kresa for Tommy Lloyd. Look at inside. Malo going strong, just pulling his way in. Offensive foul. Houston standing firm with the seven-footer coming in hot. Well, Walker able to seek out exactly where Bo was going, get his feet set. And that's a lot of body to absorb mm. the contact. But that is what this Houston Cougars team embodies in their defense and in their mind, toughness. Tajay Moore back on the floor with two fouls. He's knocked down a three. He's a high flyer, number four in black. He could give us some highlights in this one. Shed pulls it. No. Chaney the rebound. Got another chance here for Houston. 
Offensive rebounding story is going to be a major one right now. Arizona is plus two. Tajay Moore again leaves it. Cheney shot fake two of them and a foul. Coloco. He got the block, but he got the body as well. Houston is frustrating. The Arizona big men, they're up seven. 11 and a half to go here in this first half in San Antonio. After two decades with Mark Fuel Gonzaga, he's got a chance at the most wins in his first season. One away from Bill Guthridge. Bill Hodges had a nice run with Larry Bird. Well, Coach, I know it feels like a Houston home game in here. How do you overcome it, settle this team down to play Arizona basketball? Uh, we, we played good on the road all year. We just got to settle in and start getting some shots on our terms. Obviously, they're really good defensively. We're getting a feel for them, so hopefully we'll get in a little more rhythm now. Thank you, Coach. It's all about getting that rhythm, but I'll tell you this. The best job that Tommy Lloyd did was self-recruitment. Yes. Was uh, keeping these young men intact when they could have went somewhere else because a new coaching staff was coming in. That in itself mm -hmm. was monumental because of the belief that he could get them to where they needed to be, which he's done. The re-recruiting was huge. Yes. Balo gets a nice feed from Coloco. Big to big passing, and that's what they're looking for. Get a dunk inside. Arizona was unranked till late November. They got no top 25 votes and were picked fourth in the conference to start the year. And then they just started running over their opponents as Moore misses and got a whistle. That's going to be on Balo of Arizona. So the loose ball foul goes against the Arizona seven footer. Again, the activity and what makes Houston so tough and why it's difficult to keep them off the glass. They don't allow you to put a body on them. They're in perpetual motion. So when the shot goes up, you have to be on the move just as they are and then put a body on them. Apollo picks up his second foul. Nice kick. Get it organized. The Cougars knock down half of their shots. That includes a couple of three pointers. Edwards with Pella Larson on him and he drills a three and thought he was fouled. He was looking for contact there. It's all going good for the Cougars to start this game. They knocked down their third three pointer. Does Arizona have an answer? Coloco gives it up. Terry can't turn the corner. Three pointer on its way. Larson. Pure shooter, the transfer from Utah. The Pac-12 six man of the year. And Larson was left open. Defensive mistake that time by Juwan Roberts, who helped inside too much. And the quick movement of the basketball got Larson that open shot. Hot pass. Cheney couldn't handle it. Up ahead, Terry. Spread it out. Transition three. No. And that'll be Houston ball. Watch right here. Larson is wide open. What you don't see is where Roberts was, was stuck inside, and Calvin Sampson is telling him, What are you doing? And then when Houston does make that mistake, that's why I said a lot of ball movement, pick and roll, force the back line to be confused. That's what I'm talking about in regards to how to get open shots and use the Cougars' aggression against them. Hey, how happy is Roberts is in a game right now instead of practice be running suicides what? after, oh, you know, after <laughs> what we saw? Everybody yeah. was running everybody. Yeah, I got tired watching yeah. that. Arizona down seven, the top seed in the south, number two overall seed to Gonzaga, and Matherin is fouled by Moore. They're gonna pick up the third foul on Tajay Moore. Tough. Kelvin Sampson giving him an earful on his way to sit down. Well, it's the arm right there, but because he fought over the top of the screen, now that left arm came out and became the contact point. The official was able to call it out front. No, it's down. Yep. Three-pointer is good for Kyer. He stepped up big. He was the starting point guard. While Kirk Creasa was out with that ankle injury. Haven't seen Creasa since those early minutes. 
We wonder about his status as White gives it up. Shed, bullet pass. Eight to shoot. A little mid-range jumper is good for Ramon Walker. That was for you, Brian, because you talked about him really being out behind the three-point line. He said, I'm going to give you two off the bounce right here just to let you know what I got in my bag. <laughs> Matherin, long three, short. Carlton clears it away. Houston with a basketball. Eight. 22 remaining in this first half in this 1-5 matchup. Every coach dreads that five seed. So many five seeds have bowed out in the NCAA tournament. It was no different this year, but Houston great trap survived. And now going to get a timeout. So the Cougars get the timeout. Shed going to work here. Larson, Creesa, the Tubelis twins, and then Coloco and, Mal and uh, Balo from Mali. And they've all arrived here in Tucson. Eight of the 11 scholarship players from outside the U.S. And Ali LaForce, all eyes on the man from Estonia, Kirk Creesa, who's back on the floor. That's right, Brian. You mentioned his injury a couple of times. So when he suffered the ankle injury in the Pac-12 quarterfinals against Stanford, it looked like he was going to be out for the entire tournament. He appeared back in the lineup for the game against TCU, so he ended up missing three total da games. Last game, he played 26 minutes. And when I asked Coach yesterday, are you going to start Teresa today, he said, I don't think so. So that was a, a late decision today to put him in the starting lineup. A huge reason why is he is the emotional leader of this team. He'll pump up the crowd. He'll take a big charge. So when the stage is the biggest, you need guys like that on the floor. The team also confirmed he is not on in minutes restriction tonight. All right, good reporting there, Ali. I thought uh, same thing. You know, we talked to mm -hmm. Tommy Lloyd yesterday and uh, reconsidered maybe just getting him loose in the warm-ups and then having him not sit down and then come in a regular bench rotation. He was in the starting lineup. He's back on the floor now as they got a foul on the Cougars. Well, I think also got confirmation from the trainers that he couldn't injure it even more. Beg your pardon. Larson called for the foul of Arizona. It'll be Houston ball when we continue. Timeout on the floor. Home of the Alamo, San Antonio, Texas. And it sounds like a home game for the Houston Cougars. Their third straight Sweet 16. And a moment ago, Alley caught up with Kelvin Sampson, Houston head coach. Well, Coach, you imposed your will. You rattled them early. How'd they get back in it? Well, I mean, our biggest bugaboo all year, uh, we fight two things, uh, Ali, is uh, foul trouble and a little fatigue. You know, getting uh, uh, Tajay in foul trouble wasn't good because now we got to play a, a true freshman who's better off playing spot minutes, but we have to finish the half with him because we don't have anybody else. But you got to be smarter. You know, I mean, when you get two fouls, the third one, you got to be a little smarter than that. But our defense is carrying us right now. We got the game at a good pace for us. Um, but we just got to keep defending. They're hurting us on the offensive glass. We got to clean that up. Thank you, Coach. All right. Good stuff, Allie. And here's the, the, the thing, the dilemma, is that you want to play aggressive. I want you to do that, but I want you to be smart at the same time. Chet misses a three. Terry with the rebound, and he is fouled. So again, the, the fouls for the Cougars stacking up here. Josh Carlton hit with the foul. And that's going to be foul number seven on the Cougars, which is going to put Arizona on the line for a one and one. Watch Masters Live for exclusive coverage of Amen Corner 15 and 16 and featured groups. Watch live on the CBS Sports app, CBSSports.com, Paramount Plus, and Masters.com. You know, Brian, it has to be something that the players are not grasping for Houston. If at this point of the season, your coach still has to say the same thing. Because what's been consistent, and I gave you that number, they commit 17 fouls a game. So this thing has been going all year. And now when you get to the situation against an elite team like Arizona, who can shoot 74% from the free throw line, although maybe offensively they may not be going, they can utilize the line as an ally and get you in foul trouble and score points with the clock stop. Well, now Arizona, they've got seven minutes remaining in this first half where they're going to be at the free throw line on every foul. Arizona 
Six team fouls as well. The next one they commit is going to send Houston to the line. So we could have some free throws. Shed in traffic. Carlton's got it. Kicks it. Shed active. Here's the freshman Walker he's talking about. Now Shed can't hit it. Carlton oh, offensive man. board. And the putback. Josh Carlton. It's a DeMatha night here in San Antonio. Had two DeMatha players in the first game. Dickinson and Justin Moore. Michigan and Villanova. And Carlton also part of that team at DeMatha. Incredible that you'd have three players from the same high school all yeah. in the NCAA tournament and all in the same city. There's a turnover. Shed on the breakaway. Lays it in. And Houston's defense tightening the screws. Nine points off Arizona turnovers for Houston. And a denial by White. Tubelis at 6-10 just had his shot blocked by Fabian White. Take a breath. Shed. Trying to get a step. And there's Carlton inside. Boy, that was almost a disaster. Shed able to make the pass. Carlton scores. And the Cougars are up nine. Uh, excuse me, 10. 6-0 run. Parisa and a foul on Houston. That'll be on Jamal Shed. I mean, the Cougars doing what they do best. This is the score inside by Carlton, the hook inside left hand, but it was the offensive rebound earlier by Carlton that got Zubelis up underneath the basket, able to tip it in. Then it was shed with the cross court pass deflection steal. Easy to in transition. Cougars just doing what the Cougars do. Jimmy, a lot of hands on shorts, a lot of heavy breathing here yep. in this first half. These free throws are going to help both teams catch a breath, but I think that favors the Houston Cougars. Folks, the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball National Championship game returns to TBS April 4th. Cannot wait. Final four in New Orleans. Nice save by White after the missed free throw. Nine point game. Houston with a ball in the lead. Kyler Edwards. Two year starter at Texas Tech. Now at Houston. Let's a three go. No, Coloco. And that's going to be another foul. They're going to get Carlton here. And the fouls are stacking up for Kelvin Sampson. Back on the floor comes Reggie Cheney. Second foul on Josh Carlton as Coloco heads to the line. And we check in with Allie LaForce. Well, guys, growing up in Africa, he told me he started off as a soccer player, so he can switch to a guard at seven foot one, and it's not a problem. He said it helped him a lot with his footwork, how he moves laterally and his speed. He also told me this is surreal because there weren't a lot of players to make it out of his hometown. And in, for basketball, really none other than Pascal Siakam, who he told me two days ago, texted him and said, I'm really proud of you. And for him, that was a huge moment because that's his idol. He said, keep up the hard work. You're doing great. Valley, he was the most improved player in the Pac-12. And he was the Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year. He is a great testament to the development of the program at Arizona to get to this level this fast. But also that testament, first time in tournament history that a player accumulated 17 points, 13 rebounds, six assists, five blocks in 31 minutes. That was against Wright State. Yeah. So that tells you about his improvement. Knew he could play defense, but offensively he has gotten better as the year has progressed. Here is Shed off the window. No, disrupted by Balo. And that'll, let's see, officials look at each other. Was there a deflection? There was, and that'll be Arizona ball. Originally called Houston ball. Four and a half to go in this first half. Nice leave. Balo, no. Excellent pass by Creesa. Balo couldn't convert. Matherin has been quiet, Jimmy. Yeah. 0 for 5. He's got one point, came on a free throw. He does have an assist and a rebound, but Houston has been able to take Matherin out of this game in the first half. 
Parisa checks shed. And now the switch. At 6-10. To Bellis on him. Gets a step easy. Shed bouncy. Can't finish it. White oh, flying high for an offensive rebound. Oh, man. Oh. Like spring loaded. Shed. So quick. Edwards with four to shoot. Three pointers short. Mather in the rebound. Cats down seven with a basketball. Three and a half to go. Sweet 16 matchup here in San Antonio. The top seeded Arizona Wildcats. White knocks it out of the hands of two bell. It's almost a turnover. Backdoor cut, and that's off of Houston. Cheney touched it last. Timeout. Catch your breath. Arizona ball down seven when we come back. 320 remains in the first half. Take a look at the game summary here. Arizona shooting just 29%. Houston forcing five turnovers, nine points off those turnovers. As we look at our advanced stats presented by Invesco QQQ. So of all the made baskets for Arizona this year, Jim, 65% of those have been assisted. That's the second best mark in college basketball. Their problem is making baskets at this point. They do have five assists. Matherin still without a field goal. Follow inside, nice look. And, oh, a touch last by two Bellis. Wow. That'll be Houston ball. But that was a great offensive set. Two Bellis had it inside, but watch Edwards. Uh, is that Edwards on the backside of Walker, Walker on the backside that comes in, and that's that defense that's always in rotation and that's stuck to one spot understanding where the ball is at and got to it Edwards kicks it here goes shed inside outside balls moving well for Houston Pella Larson he is on white white can't get it to go Reggie Cheney another offensive rebound Houston with seven offensive rebounds or plus two Seven to shoot now. Edwards got Terry on him. And White scores. Whoa, right at the end of the shot clock. Reggie Cheney inside. Beautiful feed. Just patient. 11 second chance points. Arizona's turned it over six times. Ballo. Looking on Cheney. Flurry of move denied by White. A spin. Terry. No. Matherin comes away with a rebound. Matherin puts it up. He misses. Can't buy one. Boy, a furious pace for the ball here. And Houston, as Edwards trying to run that down. It'll be Arizona ball. Man, the whole sequence was something. Yeah, but if, when you play against this Houston team, and I know it sounds cliche, but you got to be comfortable being uncomfortable because that's what this Houston team is going to force you to do and feel because every shot is going to be contested. Passes are going to be now. You're going to get body on body, and sometimes you need to feel that pressure like a puncher. If you're a boxer, feel it, absorb it, get used to it, and then attack it in a different way. To give credit to Dale and Terry, too. Didn't give up on the play. And we'll get the ball back. Man, Shed just crashing in to the scores table as he got a deflection on that. 19 games this year. Houston's held their opponent under 60. Only San Diego State and North Texas with more. Two hundred miles from Houston to the AT&T Center in San Antonio. H Town definitely in the house right now. You can hear them; they're loud. Yep. Kelvin Sampson implored his fans to travel and be loud, and they have obliged. Would have been really been cool if he had just bought tickets for him. <laughs> <laughs> he can afford it. I, you better believe he can. Kyer finds Matherin. Matherin finally knocks one down. Needed to see one go through his first made basket of the game. 
Had missed his first six. It's a three. Cougars by six. With the ball, minute 20 remaining in this first half. Shed. Little floater. He is fouled. Got him on the elbow. Shed making it happen. Yeah, a little bail out that time. You get a player under control. You can contest a shot. You don't need to reach in. But I will tell you this, Brian, with a minute 12 left. If you're Arizona, this is a six point game. You come down, you score. You keep, maybe you keep it at six point. You're not playing your best basketball, but the positive you can take in is that you're not playing your best basketball and you steal down a marginal amount that you right. can get back into if you can make adjustments. And you haven't gotten Matherin going yet. Yep. Your star. First one's good for Shed. Hey, the best of the NBA go head to head in pursuit of winning a championship. The NBA playoffs presented by Google Pixel it begins April 17th on TNT. The dream. He's got two. Hakeem Olajuwon, five slamma jamma days. I saw enough of him in the NBA. My, my <laughs> second game in the NBA after I held out. First was a, no, my first game was against the Houston Rockets in '93. Are you kidding me? They <laughs> got you. Good thing you held out. Well, <laughs> no, I didn't. I had to play them fresh off the couch. <laughs> Under a minute to go. Pella Larson finds Mather and Edwards is on him. Mather draws a quick double, and that's going to be a foul on White. Edwards took a shot. But right, Fabian White with a foul. Mather is going to the line. Well. If you're gonna if you're gonna dribble, you got to dribble that thing back out and create some more space. If you discontinue to dribble, it's gonna be an easy trap. And watch Matherin right here with the head that hits Edwards, but it was a reach-in foul that the official got first. White picks up his first. Benedict Matherin from Montreal, an incredible story, Pac-12 Player of the Year. He was the most outstanding player in the Pac-12 tournament. And he misses the first. I mean, he is having a rough shooting first half. Well, as you haven't seen this type of pressure with this size and athleticism. Yeah, you have to make the adjustment. He's still only a sophomore, okay? But what they're not allowing Mather to, Mather to do is have one-on-one -on -one opportunities to create enough space to get a shot to be comfortable. He's improved his game so much. We will play at the next level, no question. Oh, yeah. Could be a lottery pick. Off to a tough start, though. Seven point game. Houston in the lead with the ball. And Shed again making it happen. Edwards set up the three. No. White and Larson. And it's going to be off of Pella Larson. That'll be Houston ball. It is amazing how much ground Fabian White covers. Both sides of the ball. Pounding for offensive rebounds. What he does on defense as well. He's got a motor. Last touch by Matherin. Tajay Moore in foul trouble. Ramon Walker's had to pick up some big minutes. Even though Kelvin Sampson returned to him as that. Referred to him as that freshman. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's the yeah. freshman. Edwards, exactly. and he's fouled on his way in. And Edwards will go to the line here. Kyler Edwards from Arlington, Texas. Played his high school ball at Bowie High School with Kate Cunningham. Stepped in big for the injured starters. All that experience with Texas Tech. Including the final four. Yep. Bought into the program because he's very familiar with Coach Sampson. You know, being from Dallas himself. But Kelvin he needed a fit. Kelvin had recruited him yep. out of high school. And it's been seamless here with the Cougars. Yeah, recruit the kind of young men that fit the mantra of what you're preaching. Then you can go out and recruiting is a little bit less challenging because guys want to come play for a coach like Calvin Sampson, a program like Houston, be a part of something special. One out of two. Edwards went for 15 against Illinois. 
to get him to the Sweet 16. 19 and change remaining in this first half. Tommy Lloyd wants to talk it over. Arizona ball when we continue. If you want to actually play defense, offense is easy. Everybody wants to score, but do you want to do the dirty work? But if you do the dirty work, you concentrate on it, you support your teammates, boy, you can do something special. No better example than that than right here with the Houston Cougars and what they've been able to accomplish, not just this year, but under the tenure of Coach Sampson. Houston holding Arizona just 26 points thus far in the first half. This is one of the best scoring teams in college basketball. They average 85 a game. Got to get one up here coming to the end of the half and Coloco got it off and that'll take us to the halftime. Oh we do have a foul. Good good catch Jimmy. So a foul before the clock expired it was called by Marcus Pettigrew on the baseline and they will certainly take a look to see if the foul was called before Ooh, that's oh, close that is so His close hand went in the air a moment after it goes to zero no, I, yeah. you know that's a little delayed right there on that hand but the whistle too can they hear the whistle you know because the whistle can come before the hand starts to rise up we just can't hear it. Yeah, it all, I guess it all depends on who, where, where the foul is. You know, what is the point of the foul? And then to determine whether the foul was called. Great. It didn't look like as soon as the hand went up, if you're going by the hand, certainly time had expired. where it's at it was Coloco so he was delayed on that one because it happened right here after the shot is up right there is where the foul is at oh, it, and he called it late so that's where it's at it, it wasn't on the offensive rebound on Matherin so if I'm not mistaken he said it was on Reggie Cheney on the undercut yeah so they're looking so at the clock the time yep what what to put back on the clock. But either way, Coloco is fouled on the play. He'll be going to the line. And he came over. He said point six, point didn't he? Point six, I think it was, is what they identified. They're, and they're trying to check on the clock. But that's an example of that over-rotation. When Cheney had to come so mm -hmm. hard, that picked up, because of that aggression, ended up picking up a foul that gives an opportunity to Coloco, who shoots 73%, to yeah. get this down to six. So point six is where they'll go with it. Appreciate Marcus Pettigrew coming yep. over to talk us through that. So there was the foul, even though the right arm there. came up late. Yep. And I think he was, I think Marcus was looking to see if the ball was going in as well, because he was looking up at the rim as he was calling the call. But you got it right. It was a foul. And now Coloco. Is at the line. Double bonus here for Arizona. They've been in the bonus since the seven minute mark. So two shots here at the end of the first half. For Christian Coloco shoots it at 73%. The Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year. And he calmly knocks down the first. Kelvin Sampson. <laughs> Has he sat down yet? No, he is, and he is on everybody. He's on the team. He's on the refs. He on his son too. Officials have his son. Kellen's over there. <laughs> Kellen, like, why do I get the blood of this? <laughs> so point six left, and just put it in. Long heave oh. hit the backboard from Shed. What a half! And how about the Houston Cougars holding Arizona to just 28 points? Coming up, AT and T at the half. First half analysis and an update on Texas Tech and Duke, plus the latest NCAA tournament news. It's all coming up on AT&T at the half. The road to the Final Four in New Orleans. It passes in the South Regional through San Antonio. Just about ready to start the second half here in San Antonio at the AT&T Center. 
First half stats. Houston leading the entire way of 34-28. Second lowest output for the Arizona Wildcats in a half all year. This high-powered offense was shut down. And Jimmy, if you're Arizona right now and Tommy Lloyd, it's a must that you get Benedict Mather involved in this game quickly. You, you don't want to force it to him, but you want to get him to be able to clear some space. And that first half, give the Houston Cougars a lot of credit. But look at these shots. They're contested shots when Mather either was driving or even here with the pull-up jump shot, someone is coming. So he had an opportunity on a couple occasions when he got free. He had some good looks, but he probably was pressing. So it's important that Arizona do what they do best, which is move the ball, move their bodies, see if they can create some lanes for Matherin to get a cleaner looks. Ali LaForge, you had a chance to chat with Tommy Lloyd. What do you allow? I just spoke with him. He told me that he told his team, we have to let it rip. Be aggressive, get to the basket, shoot it. Don't let these shooting woes get your confidence down. I also asked him if he'll go small considering the Matherin struggles. He said, we played with it a little in the first half. We might do it again here in the second as well. Yeah, good stuff, Allie. Let it rip is a very Aye. popular phrase for Tommy Lloyd. I tell you, Angelus Tubelis, there's a, a bit of a target on him as well. Let's see how he handles this second half. He struggled in the first half. And looking inside, Coloco, and that's a foul right away. Fabian White. So that little drop pass into the big man, Coloco. Figured that'd be something we'd see a lot of for Arizona, that it's a big part of their offense. And they get the foul here on their first possession. Well, on that report, too, part of being a coach is also being a psychologist and how you get your team motivated to play. And what Tommy Lurie was doing, understanding he has a young team, instead of yelling, slamming clipboards and saying what you're not doing, he's like, listen, I'm calm, I'm relaxed, I know what we can do. I want that, I want you to feed off of that kind of energy, that positive energy, so you can come out and play loose. I don't want you to play tight. It's a much different look with the two coaches here. I mean, Kelvin Sampson over there <laughs> looking like Yosemite Sam. <laughs> And he is on everybody. Sampson, Final Four team last year. And he's got his Cougars out in front by five. Just underway here in half number two. On oh, a quick double team that time. Here's Edwards now on the take. And disrupted uh -oh. by Coloco. Ooh. And that hit, the, that hit the shot clock above the goal. So it's going the other way. And Edwards is down. Yeah. That big the knee. Got him down south a little bit. He's going to need a minute. Yep. Breathe slow. Take your time, oh. young man. Half the population can understand. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be all right. Yeah, just. Easy for us to say. I, well, yeah, we're sitting over here and say, just walk it off. Yeah, okay. All right, we'll walk it off. Woo. Well, see, back in your day, you know, guys used to wear a cup. Yes. Oh, I have one on right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, was a, I was a catcher in college, man. I don't go anywhere with You don't it. go anywhere with it. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, when we play golf the, uh, tomorrow, you better not yeah, have it on it's tomorrow. On. It's you on. better not no have quench, it on tomorrow. Especially playing with you. <laughs> Arizona with the ball. Down five. Oh, oh what a lead. Coloco. And two possessions now where Angelus Tubelis has set up Coloco, this time on a lob, and it's got the Arizona fans up. Three-point game just like that. Shed gives it up. Tajay Moore, three fouls, saddled with foul trouble. Hot pass, Carlton can't handle it. Arizona turning that momentum to start this second half. Rajulis right here, just getting involved in the offense. He can make some things happen. Again, the catching the Houston defense in rotation. That time it paid off. For the Cougars. AT&T 5G I mean Arizona. above the rim. One of the best plays of the game is Kirk Creasa, who played 10 minutes in that first half. Alley reported he's not on a minutes restriction, but that ankle is certainly a concern. And a foul on Creasa, and the Arizona fans are upset. They just caught the replay, and Tommy Lloyd is barking at Marcus Pettigrew. Seven Arizona turnovers. Houston was plus 11 in points off turnovers in the first half. Houston was also plus 14 in the paint over Arizona with all their size. 
Shed checks his feet, fires from three, cash money. Jamal Shed. Yeah, the beautiful thing about that play is Shed created that off the dribble, then he relocated in the corner for more to find them for that knock in three. Nice lead to balance on the take now, and he is fouled. Boy, he has been a different player in this second half. Ajulis to Bellis going to the line. But well, you see the back end of this play, but it was Shed that got underneath, kicked it out to Moore, and then relocated in the corner. But it's a different energy with this Arizona team in the yep. second half. The decisions are quicker, the ball is moving, guys are setting screens, they're rolling harder. Hence, now you're getting more efficient shots. Tabellas has not scored his first points of the game right there, but he's been a playmaker to start this second half. Get complete coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Tournament on NCAA.com. Angelus Tubelis, his twin brother on the team. Tubelis Tubelis, both from Lithuania. They were important for each other during the pandemic and the shutdown. Tubelis at 6'10", knocks down his first two shots. And he's got a couple of passes as well that have got Arizona cooking. Travel. It's going to be a travel. Yep. Kura Kresa forcing Shed into a walk. Well, let's see right here. The foul may have occurred after. That's what he's saying. The travel happened first and then the slap down by Kern. Arizona's been a comeback team all year. Nice lead again. Here is Tubelis. Can't get it to go. Carlton back taps it and into the hands of Fabian White. And Creesa hits the deck. That's going to be a foul on Kerr Creesa. Boy, it is getting intense. Both benches irate. So Pella Larson's going to check in here, and Kirk Creesa on his way out, and he is upset. Looks like a look in transit. He tries to take. Yeah, that's, that's no, not going to get that one. It's his third foul, Jimmy. Yeah, it's tough right there, but he's providing a lot of energy. One thing to keep in mind, too, with this Houston Cougars team, offensively and defensively, they love to tip the ball. They're encouraged to do it because if they can't get the rebound offensively or defensively, they feel if they keep it in play by tipping it, better opportunity to secure it. Shed, little pull up. Got a good look. Can't get it to go. Terry, back cut right there. I tell you, Houston has done a great job on the Arizona back cuts. That's something they do very well. And Houston has denied them all game. Cougars have never trailed in this one. They lead by four. Their biggest lead was 10 in the first half. Pella Larson in for Creesa. He's a good ball handler. Was a point guard at Utah last year. Nice. And he lays nice. it in. Boy, that was pretty. And that's going to his left. And it was some body contact inside that opened up the lane for Larson. And that's how you attack the Houston defense. Quick, decisive, get to your spot, and then when you get to the rim, you got to finish it. Fabian White waiting for Edwards. Looking inside to Carlton. In traffic. Gives it up. White, three-pointer on its way. No. Trying to follow his own. Coloco secures the rebound. Larson at the controls. Terry cut off. Ooh, that was close. <laughs> Dangerous. To Bellis on his way. Missed it again. Houston ball. Timeout on the floor. What a game. Two point Cougar lead. Hella Larson making it happen. A drive to the basket. Pretty little touch around the rim. But thanks, Greg. Is a Southwest Conference feel to it. Arkansas, Texas Tech, Houston. Tomorrow, we're set up once again. The Sweet 16 doubleheaders on CBS and TBS all starts with the Nissan NCAA tip-off show at 6 p.m. on TBS. Got a good one here. Cougars with the ball. They lead by two. Larson going to be hit with the foul. Jimmy, we could very likely get to tomorrow with Kansas 
being the only number one seed remaining. Baylor out last week. Gonzaga lost to Arkansas earlier today. And the top seed in the south, the Wildcats of Arizona, trailing here in the second half. Larson just picked up his third foul. Here is Edwards. Nice. Good. And, and that was the play Calvin Sampson wanted to run out of the timeout. A foul was called, but they went right back to it to bring Kyler Edwards from the weak side off screen up top. As the ball was going towards the baseline to track the defense that way, you find an opening for Edwards. Justin Kyer will enter for Pella Larson with those three fouls. Kirk Creasa will sit as well. It'll be very interesting how Tommy Lloyd works his point guard position. Yep. Kyer did a nice job for him. Filling in for Creasa. That's going to be a whistle and a foul on Houston. Fabian White picks up the foul. That's number three on him, and the Cougs starting to rack up the fouls. Yeah, watch Edwards come right here. Again, it was a misdirection play because all eyes was going to be were going to be on Shed a little bit with that dribble to the baseline, and Edwards patiently waited to the screen to set up to get open. That's blocked. More. Angelus Tubelis, who took a step trying to get some room. He was so far from the basket of the high flyer. More. There to deny him. Matherin looking inside, deflected by Moore. Coloco, ball's moving well. Terry looking for Matherin here. Five to shoot, and Matherin goes to the basket. Hangs. Oh my goodness. Acrobatic finish. The hang time of Benedict Matherin. Well, he took the first hit when he put the ball on the deck first, but that didn't. Stop him from attacking the 10 and then using that athleticism to finish softly off the glass. Yeah, both of these teams put together highlight reel dunks, but the defense has been so good we haven't Offense. seen it. That's going to be an offensive foul. And Tajay Moore knocking Matherin right off his feet. And number four on Moore. Well, look at the contact by Shad. Got away with it. And then inside Ooh. Carlton straight up. And that's athleticism. Now listen, Moore. And Matherin had been talking back and forth. Matherin set that up right there and forced Moore into that foul. That's where Calvin Sampson is talking about. You have to be smarter. So back to the freshman, Ramon Walker. He gave him some good minutes in that first half. Tabellas goes the lefty. Oh, it's missed it badly. Yikes. Terry, second chance here. Offense. And offensive okay. foul. Mm. Terry right there just dips the shoulder right into the chest of Walker. A turnover for Arizona. Walker losing the handle. That was a mess from the start. Yeah, he never <laughs> had it. He never had it. It's like a yo yo. Like walking the yo yo. So Shed will get it organized here. Carlton the screen. Shed on the take. Tough shot. Tough shot. Carlton's right there for the follow. Just get it on the rim for Houston. It's like shots on goal. They are such a good offensive rebound team. 14 second chance points for the Cougars. And they lead it by five. Coloco going to work on Carlton. Gives it up. Here's Terry. Three pointer is good. Now that's a great find by Coloco. It's two dribbles. Identify where Terry was at. Whipped the pass right on time. Terry just did, done the rest. Taylor Terry's got 11. He's knocked down his second three. Closest it's been since it was five to three. Again, Houston has not trailed in this game. No ties, no lead changes. Shed, little floater. No, back iron got his own. Here's Edwards now, fake to three, gives it up, Shed, he'll fire, catch! <laughs> Filling in so well. Tremont Mark, Marcus Sasser out, Shed and Moore picked him up, and Shed's having a great night here in the Sweet 16. He's got 12. 
and playmaking all night. Kyer working on Shed. No, he missed it. Kyer gets his own. Another chance here. Matherin on the drive. Nope. That's a foul on the floor. When we have to talk about the offensive rebounding, you think about the bigs being able to do it. The shot goes up, gets it back. Edwards kicks it back out to Shed and say, yeah, yeah, I got this. The man from Maynard, Texas. Let's check in with Allie LaForce. Well, Shed became known this season for his assist rate, so it's great to see him out there scoring. And Coach said of him, quote, that boy came into this world a point guard. <laughs> As a leader, he doesn't mind saying what needs to be said, how they need to be said. And the guys rally around him, and you're seeing it out there right now, guys. Allie, he led the conference. Nearly six assists a game. He was eighth in the nation in that category. Top ten in the nation in assist to turnover ratio this yep. year as well. And that's saying a lot for a freshman. Six to shoot. Matherin drawing all kind of traffic. And ball that was over his head. Two Bellis throws it away. Right. Excuse me, I mean a sophomore. Even in the second year, not playing a lot the first, but being able to come in under this amount of pressure during the course of the year to fill in and have those kind of statistics. That's great credit to the young man. Edwards rises up, two-pointer misses, and that's oh. going to be a foul on Arizona. Ballo, and he fouls Carlton, who was going for the rebound. Tommy Lloyd, first-year coach at Arizona, got a lot of inexperienced players in the NCAA tournament. Houston, they are very experienced, and they've maintained the lead the whole way. Josh Carlton on the offensive glass. I mean, this is outstanding. The ability for him to get in position, the awareness then to finish once he gets at the tip in the put back. And you understand the UConn transfer just understands his job and what his role is. KYG, man, know your game. <laughs> Those six rebounds, five offensive, and now Shed goes to the basket and scores. Seven point. Houston leads Shed with 14 now. He averages 10 a game. Stacking up both points and rebounds. Here's Jamal Shed. Wow. And Matherin. Another acrobatic finish. Yeah, but that time Matherin was able to catch the ball on the move, negotiate his way through some traffic, and then use that athleticism to get to the opposite side of the basket to, to score. Here's Edwards. He Tough. pulls it off. Terry! Oh, he was feeling it. Tough. Kyler Edwards hits another three. 12 for Edwards. He's knocked down three threes. He's got Houston up eight. The number one seed in trouble here in San Antonio as we approach the halfway mark of the second half. Terry on the take. Wild it. shot. Yeah. No. Flying high for the rebound. Juwan Roberts. Yeah, a little off balance once he. His head started leaning forward. His shoulders and the rest of his body followed. That time, just threw it up, hoping that he'd get a chance to go in. Offensive rebounds are, are level right now, 11 apiece, but plus 10 and second yeah. chance points for Houston and Shed going to the line. DA, you said he's feeling it. Mm. That's off the dribble. You give me too much room, I'm going to make you pay three up for you for H Town. Come holler at your boy right there. That's what he said. <laughs> He's a driver with high assist, too. So you're kind of expecting a drive from him. He just pulled it on yep. Terry. Be interesting next time around if Terry gets a little bit into him. Shed cashes in the first free throw. I think what really helped Shed, too, is that because his turnover, his assisted turnover rate is so high guys trust him coaching staff trust him so they give him a lot more leeway to kind of run the ship but that's earned over time and that's earned through repetition but also being consistent at what you do when you do that you're able to lead the high powered offense Chen's got 16 10 and a half Cheney on the floor for Houston Coloco back on the floor for Arizona Larson to Kyer Halfway through the second half. Kyer trying to get a step. Cannot. Coloco. Jump hook. No. Cleared away by Roberts. Oh, 
Pitch, yeah, too mm -hmm. hot. Threw it at the feet of Cheney. Houston turns it over. Arizona trying to take advantage. Oh, my goodness. What a play that time by Roberts. Arizona gets another shot here. Mather in foul. He was under the basket. But he is fouled. And Benedict Matherin will go to the free throw line. Kind of got away with that. You know, in that last play by Coloco, we'll see a, a, the foul here. It's a little jump mm -hmm. hook that he missed, right? As he grows and gets stronger, the contact, lower, the lower body contact that Carlton gave him, he'll be able to absorb that and finish through that contact. And that comes with maturity and growth as a young player. Coloco had that going against TCU. He went for 28 points. A lot of those. Off that jump hook as Matherin knocks down the free throw. Uncool is back in session. The perpetually awkward Chad will return for his sophomore year. But first catch up on the cringe of the season. It's season one. It's tonight after NCAA coverage on TBS. Matherin gets a friendly bounce. Matherin started 0 for 6. He's 3 for his last 3. He's going to have to be a factor. 23 and 0 when they hold their opponents under 40 percent. Right now, Arizona at 32 and change. Teresa back on the floor and immediately hit with a foul. No, that's a Coloco. Oh, You're right. Yeah. Coloco, 35, not 25. Yeah, that's all right. I think he got him on the when Carl. No, it was Cheney coming up to set the pit. It was a little bit too much contact from Coloco. Wildcat to the penalty. Nine minutes, 17 seconds. A bonus time for the Cougars at the line. You know, the challenge with Houston, they only had 67% free throw shooting team, so the white players have to be getting mm. the fouls to get to the free throw line in order to capitalize on that situation. Nicely done. Wow. Chaney just 63%. Yep. He heard you. He did. He calmly knocked him down. <laughs> it's a 10-point Houston lead. Matherin, he'll pull a three. Oh, that is smooth. He's got the quick release. Here he comes. This guy can catch fire with the best of them. He is not afraid. Nope. He's made his last four buckets, has Matherin. That was a key three-pointer. Shed. Gets by Creason, leaves it, and denied. Two meet him at the rim as Cheney. He goes strong, but he runs into a wall there, and with nine to shoot, baseline out of bounds for Houston. Well, Coloco peeled back. He helped on the drive. This is what you call multiple defensive efforts. He was inside, blocked once and twice. Yeah, Larson. Yep. Got to go here. Edwards with Larson on him. Edwards. Little fade away. No. Terry with a rebound. Here come the Wildcats. In the corner. Kirk Lisa. No. Shed on the ground is going to be a foul on Matherin. Mm. Jamal Shed needs a minute. Kind of grabbing at his, his right leg, his lower leg. A good hustle by both players, but Mather in that time just Oof. too much body, too, too aggressive right there on the try to get it back. And Shed looked like he was grabbing his calf a little bit while he was on the yeah. deck. I mean, maybe some cramps. I mean, that's not a whiskey bottle he's got right there. Nah. It's just, <laughs> he's trying to hydrate a little something really quickly. That's the kind you pull out of your. Uh, Right. Your coat pocket, coat pocket, Jimmy. A little potassium in there. You got <laughs> some a little salt, a little yeah. rehydrate. Shed scored 18 against Illinois in the second round. He played 37 minutes in that game. Coming into this one tonight, last three games, he had 16 assists, just four turnovers. And shooting it at 46% from three point range. Shed has found another gear just in the nick of time for Houston. Nine point Arizona deficit. Shed with 18 now. Wow. Houston ball. Jawan Roberts.
Tommy Lloyd mentioned they've been great on the road this year. He told Ali that they only have lost three games all year. They were all on the road at Colorado, at UCLA, at Tennessee. They didn't lose at home all year. This feels like a road game for them. This partisan Houston crowd has been loud all game. Here goes Shed. Six to shoot. Kick it. Edwards, corner three. Got it. Edwards. Delivering blow after blow for the Cougars. Deflection. Shed on the ground again. Terry. Nice. Off the window. Kalen Terry. Ten point game. 7.20 remaining. Villanova has advanced on this floor earlier tonight. Beat Michigan. The two seed. And the one seed, Arizona. In some trouble here. And now a foul. Arizona with the foul. Houston on a 17-9 run. Arizona cut it to two. Houston threw it into gear. It's a 10-point Cougar lead. Cougars lead it by 10 over Arizona. Plus 19. Points off turnovers. Two legends of their programs here watching this one. Akeem Olajuwon. And there's Sean Elliott, one of the great Arizona Wildcats. Played for Lute Olson. His number retired here at the AT&T Center. Great years with the Spurs, championship seasons. And a concerned look from the Ninja. One and one here. Roberts knocks down the first. Jawan Roberts from the U.S. Virgin Islands, then by way of Shoemaker, Texas. His first bucket of the game. The sophomore, and he knocks it down. Two big ones. Yeah. Shed sits right now. 18 points, 12 in the second half. He won't be there long. And Terry handling the point guard duties against now Cougars into a little 2 3 zone. There are no easy passes. A ton of deflections all night. Matherin pulls a three. No. Offensive rebound, Larson. And that's going to be a foul on Roberts. Beg your pardon, Ramon Walker called for the foul, not Roberts. Second foul on the freshman Walker. Tajay Moore back on the floor. Here comes Shed. And uh, Moore is going to sit here. He's still playing with four fouls. One and one here for Larson. Who envisioned greatness today? You can tune in to Inside March Madness presented by Buick and find out. Brian, you at the beginning of the half, this Arizona team had a lot of energy. I think they stepped in the lane right they there. Julius. And what I mean by that, the ball was moving, the body was moving. Then they found themselves getting some easier shots. Against this Houston team, if you're stagnant, it plays right into the hands of what they want to do. So even against the zone, those passes and decisions have to be quicker. Land violation puts the ball back in the hands of the Cougars. Shed. What a half he's had. He's put together 12 points. He's been drinking the pickle juice. <laughs> That's right. And Shed gives it up. Three to shoot. Got to get one up. Shed with Mather and Autumn. No chance. Shot clock violation. And a defensive stand for Arizona. Good defense up. Time by the Wildcats of being aware of the shot clock, but then not bailing out the shooter at the end, negating. A very good de defensive possession. It looked like Walker might have had a shot that he passed up. Yep. Freshman's on the floor as Tajay Moore is still on the bench. Approaching the six minute mark. The top seed in the South, Arizona, down 11. No. And another over. giveaway. Nelson, you got to take that. If you're going to make that pass, particularly against the zone, one more dribble towards the baseline. And maybe Colombo's open. 12 turnovers. 
for Arizona. The Houston defense stifling with every possession. It'll be Houston ball when we come back. They lead it by 11. National championship. They have certainly been close and one of the more memorable moments in NCAA tournament history. And this team, this five slamma jamma team with Akeem Olajuwon, Clyde Drexler reached the final four in that three year window. And of course, uh, one of the most famous shots in the history of the NCAA tournament, Lorenzo Charles' putback for NC State. Final four last year for Houston. And they have the number one seed in a tough spot. The freshman Walker will take it. No, and it's cleared by Kyer. Kyer wants to push. Matherin leaves it. Larson. And now Arizona will get it organized. Cougars are plus 19 nice. on turnovers. And now Coloco, no, he can't get it. Carlton standing tough. Matherin hangs and is fouled. So the ball just pinballing inside ends up in the hands of Arizona's best player and he's going to the free throw line. Yeah, but that was an outstanding interior passing. Larson had a shot, but he dropped it inside. Coloco was able to catch and gather. He missed a shot, but then there's an activity. Matherin to clean it up and get himself to the line. Benedict Matherin Been dealing with a little bit of a, a left thumb injury no problems tonight Got off to a rough start missed his first six shots he's been good since another opportunity here for Arizona yeah, outstanding hustle by Larson uh, turn it over another giveaway for Tommy Lloyd's cats 13 turnovers now. And again, most often, Houston is converting on those turnovers. They've scored on nine of those occasions. Into the hands of the steady point guard, Jamal Shedd. Under five minutes to go. Cougs lead by 10. Does Arizona have a run at them? They certainly have the firepower. Shed, little pull up. No. Matherin kept it alive. Larson's got it out of the pack. Three on two here. Larson. Nowhere to go. Houston gets back. Outstanding job of Houston getting back. Matherin opened over that three. Ooh, missed it. Yeah. And the thing that Houston does well. They defend you even when you're in your fast break or second bear, secondary break opportunity, not allowing for those easy looks that you may normally get. The old saying, you rest on offense. And Houston working that shot clock, the ball control. Shed gets a step, kicks it. That's going to be a foul. Arizona foul. See who they get here. Bella Larson picks up the foul. That'll take us to a timeout. Houston by 10. Four minutes left in regulation. Duke outlasting Texas Tech. They catch fire in the second half. The win comes on the 32 year anniversary of Christian Leitner's buzzer beater in overtime to send Duke to the Final Four. And Coach K is still rolling in the NCAA tournament. Here in San Antonio, Jamal Shedd has had himself a night. Shed with 19, 13 in the second half. The stabilizer at the point guard position. One out of two. And check this out. Second half, both teams, Brian, shooting seven for 18. But the difference is Houston five for seven from behind a three-point line, nine out of 10 free throws. Arizona only two for five and seven out of nine. Creasa, three-pointer oh, is good. Playing with the four fouls. Hits his first basket of the game. Kirk Creasa. The lead is eight. Three and a half to go. Edwards gets stuck, and it's going to be Houston ball. Interesting here. Kelvin Sampson keeping Tajay Moore on the bench. He's sticking with a freshman. Uh, good slip that time by Larson, and then... We find Teresa right there in the corner. 
making that basket now allows you to get your defense set, which we saw almost caused a turnover by the Cougars. Fabian White enters. Good minutes from Juwan Roberts. Shed. Trying to double him. He gets wow. out of it. Oh, boy. Pass. Two-handed jam. Josh Carlton. And it's all Jamal Shedd making it happen. Back to a 10-point lead for Houston. Getting desperation time here if you're Arizona. Got to start making some baskets. Only 15 made field goals. Crease a long three. No. White secures the rebound. Tajay Moore back on the floor for Houston. What turnover up ahead Terry easy and Houston with a giveaway Terry Oglesby scolding Tommy Lloyd in the Arizona bench so a timeout on the floor Arizona gets a turnover and they scored on the other end. Houston's been in the bonus since the nine minute mark. They've got two free throws the rest of the way. If there's a tie up a held ball possession arrow belongs to Arizona. So Houston with the ball Jimmy 234 remaining and the number one seed the Arizona Wildcats in desperation mode now in San Antonio. Shed throws it out of bounds. Another Houston turnover. Well, you know, Chet, listen. Chet is only 6 1. So you dig yourself a hole in that deep corner. That's what's going to happen. It's going to be easy trap for Arizona. Chet, you got to be more cognizant not to get there, but the passer has to also be aware that they that might not be the opportunity where you throw the ball in. Can Arizona capitalize? Matherin gets himself some space. No. Back tap. Here's Terry now. Terry, nice pass. Coloco fumbles. Terry comes out of the pack and scores. Two possession game. The lead the is corner. six again. The shed gets caught in the corner. Fires another one. Coloco's got it. Houston panicking here down the stretch. Under two minutes to go. Matherin cuts and turned it over. Somebody got a hand on it. Three straight turnovers for Houston. And Arizona with a costly giveaway right there. That opportunity. Shad working the clock. Remember a foul puts him on the line for two. We're gonna play it out. Edwards, three-pointer is good! Delivers a potential finisher. Big shot. Coloco inside. Coloco no. Carlton the rebound. And the Cougars starting to feel it. Kyler Edwards has knocked down four three pointers in the second half. None bigger than that one. Right here. Matherin was caught ball watching on on shed and that cost that second half a second a second delay allowed the pass to get through watch Matherin right here okay right there he's he's watching early and then he can't even get out to the shooter that's a mental error you can't allow to happen at the end of the game in and out for Carlton. 109 left. This game is going to be known as the Shed Edwards game. Jamal Shed and Kyler Edwards both terrific in the second half. Larson's got to go fast. Larson on the drive. And that goes high off the window. Timeout. Tommy Lloyd in Arizona. Nine point game. 
102 remaining. Houston with the ball when we come back. In the second half, 13 points. Five to six from the free throw line. Drop in a couple of three pointers and some nice little dimes. He's been able to lead the way. I know he's had those two turnovers. He's got himself in trouble, but for the most part in the second half, he set the table for his Cougar teammates. Let's we'll see if they can finish the deal. Seven point Houston lead. Shed dribbles out of it, get it across the timeline on a whistle, and the free throw's coming. Two. As Matherin commits the foul. This has been some performance. And the the way Calvin Sampson has navigated around foul trouble. He's already yeah. shorthanded, missing two of his top scores in late December and Mark and Sasser. And relying on heavy minutes from freshman Ramon Walker and Jawan Roberts, but it was shed. And Edwards, who have controlled this game. But you, you notice, too, in college basketball, at the beginning of the season, you play a lot of guys, and then as it goes on, you shorten that rotation, shorten that rotation. So you're accustomed to playing with 68 players, and sometimes seven. So when you're like that, you know how to spread the minutes. You know when to give guys rest. So you're comfortable in that space. Even when you get in foul trouble, you've navigated through that through the course of the year that it doesn't affect you as much. The sophomore Jamal Shed. He's only missed once from the free throw line. Nine out of ten at the line. Clutch free throws. Under a minute to go. Arizona down nine. And it's denied by Moore. Creasa gets it back. Three pointer on its way. Air ball. Edwards has the rebound. An Arizona foul. And the Houston Cougars put a smile on the Dream's face. Relentless defensive effort for Houston. And this is at the end of the game where the scrambling effort of the Cougars is still there. Moore not being on the court a lot and Dream loving every bit of it. The bench loving it and coming into this game, the biggest question I have was with this Arizona team, young, long, athletic, not tested from the fact of this type of pressure. How would they respond to it when Houston went on a run and made them feel uncomfortable? That was the biggest challenge yeah. for me with this young team. Jimmy, there's not been a West Coast team win a national championship in 25 years. The last to do it, the Arizona Wildcats in 97 under Lute Olson. UCLA is going to be the last one standing. Top seed Gonzaga went down earlier today. And Arizona. Is going to join Baylor and Gonzaga as the top seeds and an exclamation point from Jawan Roberts. Another miss, another rebound for Houston, and the party's going to start. What a scene! The Houston Cougars, the top team in the AAC tournament champions, regular season champions in their conference. And as a five seed, the Houston Cougars are moving on to the Elite Eight. 32 wins and a win to get them to the Final Four will match a program record. Into the line for the Arizona Wildcats. And on a night when the top two overall number one seeds, Gonzaga and Arizona, bow out. Five seeded Houston Cougars are moving on, Jim. What a game. What an impressive performance. You know, Arizona, great effort in regards to trying to keep themselves. They cut the lead. They had it down to two at one point. But a masterful job by Calvin Sampson and his Cougars to respond when it was needed. They relied on their defense to create opportunities. 24 points with off the of turnovers. They were plus 18 from that perspective. When you go back and look at the game and say, where, were we, where was it won? 
the ability not only to create turnovers, but to convert those turnovers into positive points. Houston and Villanova in the Elite Eight in the South Region as we send it to Allie LaForce. Well, I'm here with Kyler and Jamal as they continue to celebrate. And I'll start with you. This feels like a home game for Houston. The energy is so electric. It feels exciting. What's it feel like from your shoes? Oh, it's like uh, another home, you know, another home game for us. Um, I'm glad the clear out came uh, and they, they brought all the energy today. You brought the three pointers. Arizona came with a big punch in that second half. How'd you save them, uh, save them off? Um, you know, we just stayed together and kept the course. You know, we, we know this going to hit big shots and hit big runs. So, you know, we just had to stay together and, uh, and keep playing. Well, you two scored 28 of the team's last 38 points in that second half, which is incredible. Jamal, you're just a sophomore, but what made you rise on this big stage? Um, confidence. My team, my teammates all put confidence in me. It's just so much love going around. I want to win for them. You know, we don't want to go home yet. Well, there was a moment where you were a little bit tired because you've been running up and down the court, forcing all those turnovers. What was that magic green juice you were drinking over there? Oh, man, J.H. is just, he's just awesome. You know, he mixed something together and he got me back right. You know, he's the best in the business. Save some of that, all right, for the next round. Congratulations. Enjoy the win. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Jamal Shedd, Kyler Edwards, where well, they carried the load here tonight. Incredible performance, combining for 40 points. Shed went for 21, 15 in the second half. We got a great Elite Eight coming here in San Antonio. Villanova and Houston for Jim Jackson, Ali LaForce, Gene Steratore. I'm Brian Anderson saying so long from San Antonio. Coming up on TBS, Inside March Madness, presented by Buick. The Cougars advance to the Elite Eight.